we're going to be denesting a radical. We have the square root of 10 plus 6 root 5, and we're going to be simplifying this expression. A nested radical is a radical expression that contains another radical expression, which come up in different situations. And some nested radicals can be written in a way that is not nested. For example, you might have something like, let's say, 8 minus 2 root 15, right? You can basically write this as root 5 minus root 3. In this case, notice that we only have one radical in each term, but in the original expression, we have the square root of the square root of something, right? So that's what we're going to do in this problem. But what makes this problem a little bit more interesting is something we're going to talk about. So if you look at this expression, this is pretty straightforward, don't you think? And how did I get that? That's something we can talk about later because I don't want to give away the method right away. Okay, so, but that's something we can definitely talk about uh, in detail in another video. So how do you denest something like this? One of the things that come up is actually there is a formula and I believe I kind of talked about it in one of my videos, but whenever you have something like a plus square root of b, by the way, when I say square root of b, it doesn't have a coefficient, but this 6, you can easily put that inside by squaring it, right? So that could be fixed. So there's a formula that allows you to turn this into the following, which is the square root of a plus the square root of a squared minus b divided by 2. And then the other term is just going to have the a minus. I think this is the correct form. I hope. It is, and we can actually test it out. For example, with the example, and let's just use this one, okay? This is supposed to be root five plus root three. Let's see if you can get that. The first thing you should do is you should square each one of these because notice that we have a squared minus b. So you were squaring each of these terms, 64 minus four times 15 is 60. So that gives us a four, which is good because the square root of four is gonna be a two. Now, a is, 8, so it should be square root of 8 plus 2 divided by 2, and the next term should be 8 minus 2 divided by 2. This should be a 5, and this should be a 3. Yes, my method is correct. I mean, the formula is correct. At least we were able to check that. Obviously, this is not a proof, but there's actually a way to uh, prove this formula, and I believe I've done that before. Make sense? Oops, I don't know how I was able to bring everything back up. <laughs> I probably pressed some button, whatever. Anyways, you get the idea. There's a formula. Let's go ahead and apply it, and why not? But this problem, trust me, is going to be more interesting. But let's plug it in. How do you express uh, 6 root 5? First of all, I can write it as square root of 36 times square root of 5, so that's, that's going to be the square root of 180. So in this case, my a is 10 and b is 180. So if I apply the formula, the square root of a, 10, plus the square root of a squared, which is 100, minus b, which is 180, divided by 2. Uh-oh, we ran into a problem. Houston, we have a problem. What is that problem? The problem is we have a negative number under the radical. So is this going to be complex? I don't think so. This shouldn't be. It's well-defined because notice that this expression is positive, right? So we should have a good outcome, like a positive outcome. Why not? Well, the formula does not work in all cases because this is a special case. That's why this problem is super duper important. And I've done a similar problem before. If I can find it, I'll share the link down below. If someone else can find it, that would be great because I'm usually lazy, okay? And not good at finding things. So let's see how we can simplify this. Have you noticed that when we did the squaring and difference, we got a negative number. So can we just reverse the process maybe Write this expression as follows, right? And now look at it this way. I want this to be my a, and I want this to be my square root of b. Good. That might work. If a is equal to 6 root 5, uh, a squared is going to be, because we need it, right, for the formula, 36 times 5, which is 180, and b is just going to be 100, right, because square root of b is 10. Remember that? That distinction is important because you always want to write it. You always want to write it as square root of a plus the square root of b. That's the format you're looking for. Make sense? Okay.
I hope it does. Now, if you apply the formula, then maybe we can just write this as the square root of a, which is 6 root 5, plus uh, the square root of a squared minus b. This time I'm going to subtract those numbers and then divide it by 2. And then the next one is easy once you got the first one, right? This is going to be a minus sign. And what happens is if this is a minus sign, then this becomes a minus sign. You get the idea? Okay, that's fairly easy. I think you can memorize this formula because I did. All right, so what does that become? Um, what's the square root of 80? It's 4 root 5. Good. So that's going to give me 4 root 5, and then 6 root 5, 10 root 5, divided by 2, that's going to be 5 root 5. Awesome. What about this? 6 root 5 minus hmm, 4 root 5 is going to give me 2 root 5, and that's going to be root 5. So is this really like denested? Probably. I don't know. But this might give you something. Anyways, that's not the point I'm making. Uh, I just wanted to show you if you apply the formula, this is something you're going to get. And we can always get back to this because I really need to show you. I don't know if this is the first method. Let's just say it's the first. But my second method is just going to be awesome. Okay, ready? Okay. Have you noticed that we kind of had to switch things around? So this did not work and we kind of had to switch it, right? But then, this, even though this looks like the square root of a plus root b, it doesn't really look like it because I want a to be an integer. And also, one thing to keep in mind is a squared minus b was not a perfect square. So that doesn't look very good to me, does it? Maybe it does, but I want it to be a perfect square, okay? I'm very picky about it. So here's what we're gonna do. We're going to adjust it a little bit because if you think about it, a squared minus b was 80, remember, right, with the fix. But then I want it to be a perfect square. So what can I divide a squared minus b by? In other words, what can I divide 80 by to make it a perfect square? If you say 5, you got it. And you know why 5 is significant? Because we have a square root of 5. That's why using 5 is important. I mean, you could use other numbers too. Like if you divided 80 by some other number like 20, you will also get a perfect square, but I don't want to divide by 20. I want to divide by 5. So what am I talking about? If this doesn't make sense at all, hopefully this will. Okay, I need to factor out a root 5. And that's going to give me 6 plus 2 root 5. You get it? Okay, now this is in the desired format. See that? That's a good one. But what about the square root of 5? The square root of the square root of 5. We're just going to write it like that. And that kind of brings us back here which is kind of valid, right? Like, anyways, I just pretended that it wouldn't be working. Now we have the following product. Okay, let's go ahead and fix the second one first, and then we'll get back to the first factor. What is this? This is, if you think about it, it's square root of 5 plus 1. But if you wanted to use the formula, let's go ahead and do it. This is A, and this is the square root of 20, which is B, right? Or I should say B is 20. A is 6, B is 20, right? So a squared minus b is going to be 36 minus 20 equals 16. Yes, this is what I was looking for. I want it to be a perfect square, right? Exactly, we got that. Now, we have the square root of a, which is 6, plus the square root of 16, which is 4 divided by 2. And then this becomes 6 minus 4 divided by 2. This is square root of 5, and this is square root of 1, which is 1. <laughs> awesome. And then we have the square root of the square root of 5. So that should be the answer, right? But what is that equal to? Well, you could probably do the following. Distribute. This is 5 to the power 1 fourth times 5 to the power 1 half plus 5 to the power 1 fourth. So that's the result. If you add the exponents, you get 5 to the power 3 fourths plus 5 to the power 1 fourth. And now you can write this as a sum of two radicals that don't contain radicals. So it'll be denested. How? This is going to be the fourth root of 125 plus the fourth root of 5, and that will be the answer. Where does this come from? The square root of 10 plus 6 root 5. That's kind of surprising, isn't it? Yes. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and... Bye-bye.